Right now, I want to welcome to the program Amanda Collins. Amanda, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Oh, thank you for having me. You bet. I hope you're doing okay. I'm doing really well. Thank you. Good. Uh, you know, obviously, I thought about you this week as we saw the debate in Colorado um, to, 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 to reinstate a, a ban on concealed carry on campus. Uh, campus carry has been the law in Colorado since 2003. There have not been any problems, but now they're going back and they are uh, going to try to make these campuses uh, uh, legally carried gun-free zones. And we've seen a lot of talk uh, from people who support this, who have brought up women who want to defend themselves against sexual assault with a gun. And we've, we've seen the comments that um, you know, look, you, you, you may think that you're going to be sexually assaulted and you could shoot somebody by accident. Uh, you don't need a gun. There are other things like uh, judo or the buddy system. Mm -hmm. As you've heard all of these things, Amanda, I mean, what's been going through your mind? Um, it, it is so frustrating because, and I wish that I could sit down with each one of these policymakers and just have a face-to-face -face conversation with them and tell them my story, especially the representative out of um, Colorado who made the, the comment that he did on Friday. I have it in front of me about, um, you know, he said, it's why we have call boxes, it's why we have face zones, it's why we have whistles. And I could just go through and argue each one of those statements with the experience that I had. For one, all of these are just sentiments that in give a false sense of security in my, well, in my experience. I know that the university that I attended, the University of Nevada, Reno, they didn't have any call boxes the night that I was attacked. They afterwards installed them. But I can tell you that a call box above my head while I was straddled on the parking garage floor being brutally raped wouldn't have helped me one bit. Um, the safe zone, well, I was in a safe zone. And my attacker didn't care. What, what do you, what do you, Amanda, what do you mean that you were in a safe zone? Well, he says that it's why we have safe zones. Right. So if the campuses are designated as a safe zone or I take it as a, a gun-free zone, all it does is ensure the perpetrator that they are going to be unmatched because when they the, pick a victim. Because you were attacked very close. I mean, you were attacked in what they would consider to be a safe zone, I'm assuming. I mean, you were within... Site of the living. campus police department. <laughs> right. And I'm gonna share something this afternoon that I haven't I haven't shared uh before and that is is that it's known that I could see the police cruisers um less than fifty feet away from me from where I was being attacked, but the moment I saw those cruisers I knew at the same time that no one was coming for me. Why did you know that? Because they were all off duty, the office, the offices had closed. They weren't in their cruisers. There was no one there. And so, I'm a whistle wouldn't have gotten anybody's attention. It was isolated and late at night, and um, you know, it's just it's really frustrating that I'm supposed to hand over my own protection to a man. But they're not able to guarantee our protection. And the comments that he made, uh, that this uh, representative made about women not knowing um, if they're going to be raped or, you know, accidentally shooting the wrong person, is, was extremely offensive because he specifically targeted, targeted female students. So is he saying that all women are unable to make sound decisions? In the midst of that, that we should go against our God-given gut instinct that something is wrong. I knew something was wrong the moment I was grabbed from behind. When you, Amanda, when, when, when you hear the, these statements, um, I think it's important, and, and again, I hate to ask you to talk about your story, but I think it's important that people understand this guy who, who assaulted you, you were not mm -hmm. his. You weren't his only victim. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. He. Um, so I was. I was raped at gunpoint in a gun-free zone, less than a hundred feet away from the police department's office. 
And then he went on to further rape two other women and murder his third victim. That we know of. That's how many cases we know of that this man had against him during the trial. And so he's currently sitting on death row now. Um, But had I been caring that night, two other rapes would have been prevented and a young life would have been saved. And you, you, you believe that and now here's the important thing. This is what I want people to understand who haven't heard your story. You say if you were carrying that night that these women right. uh, and, and you could have uh, uh, prevented this sexual assault from occurring. Um, you had a concealed carry license at the time, right? Yes, I did. I did. OK, so why couldn't you carry on campus? Because as the state legislation stands, it is illegal. So I would have potentially faced ramifications such as losing, being expelled from school, so losing my education, losing my um, right and privilege to carry everywhere else. I would have lost my permit and potentially faced the jail time had I been carrying that night. That's what the state law currently says. However, when I was met with my attacker on a gun-free zone and he was carrying a gun, None of the consequences affected him. Losing his non-existent education was not a deterrent. Losing his non-existent concealed carry permit was not a deterrent. The only person that had anything to lose that night was me. And I would have lost, if I had been carrying that night, uh, I could have potentially lost, you know, my education and whatnot. But I also wasn't, I wasn't carrying that night, and I still lost. So I was legislated into being a victim. Now, as as angry as I know the audience is having heard this story and what happened to you, Amanda, I want them to be prepared to get even angrier because after you were sexually assaulted, uh, Mm -hmm. while this guy was still out there, that's when the university said you could legally carry, right? Yes, and it was after the third... Um, victim had been murdered, and he was that large. And and so what did they tell you? Uh, they granted me permission with six contingencies. The first one being that as soon as I divulged to anybody that I had been granted such permission, that it would be null and void. So they granted me my Second Amendment right at the expense of my first. Have you told anybody you would lose your ability to defend yourself? Right. Because they, because presumably, if if word got out, Amanda, that you could protect yourself, well, then other students and maybe faculty they would want to be able to protect themselves too. Well, and they should be. That that should not be denied anybody. For us to maintain our dignity and to keep that intact should not be denied. How is rendering me defenseless, how is that going to protect you against a violent crime? You know, i got to tell you, Amanda, I'm not the right person to answer that question because I, 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 I agree with you. I don't, right. underst- I don't understand it either. Uh, and, right. I, and I hear these politicians uh, try to tell me that we're, we're all going to be better off if, if you know, uh, concealed carry holders can't carry on a college campus. You are the same, you, you are the same woman off campus as you were on campus, right? You weren't going to change. I mean, you were a concealed carry holder who could carry all over town except for the college campus. Right. As soon as I crossed that arbitrary line, then for some reason I became a non-law-abiding citizen. Do you think, Amanda, uh, that students are – do you think that young women – are, are can be targeted uh, because of this idea that well they're helpless they're defenseless they're, they're they, they don't have a gun on them they're on a college campus uh, the worst I get maybe is is, is maced in the face I'm going to go ahead and try do you Absolutely. think that attitude exists yeah I think so and I think I mean I unfortunately I can't cite specifics right now but I have read studies where people who have been interviewed in um, in prison have said that they would so much prefer to be guaranteed that they will be unmatched 
when they want to commit a crime. And so knowing that those areas are gun-free zones, they know that they're, it's prime picking. And the fact of the matter is, is that despite, I mean, I had my, my parents made my sister and I both get our second degree black belts to get our driver's license when we were 16. But the moment I was met with a, against a man much bigger than me, the one equalizing factor is a firearm. You know, Amanda, and, and again, we've heard these guys say, well, I'll just learn judo. Uh, so no, you were a second degree black belt, just, just a uh, buddy system, uh, Amanda, but you weren't walking to your car by yourself, were you? No, I wasn't. I walked, uh, I walked to the parking garage where I had parked with a group of people and I had surveyed the area to make sure that I didn't see any immediate threat. And so I was the only one that had parked on the ground floor. So they went up and I continued on to my vehicle. And the only thing I, I didn't see was the man who was hunched behind a wheel well, um, behind a truck. And as I, I passed him, he grabbed me from behind. It seems to me, Amanda, that um, that your voice should be out there uh, a, a lot more. I'm curious. I mean, do you get a lot of requests from the media to, to talk about your story and, and to, to tell your side of, of this story? Mm-hmm. No, um, actually, Pierce Morgan, someone from the Students for Concealed Carry had reached out to him and said, hey, I know um, a victim who, or a survivor of gun violence who is not for more gun control. Do you want to interview her? And um, I gave permission and all that, and he turned on the opportunity to speak with me. And um, I know that Nikki Gozer had wrote the Today Show and said, you know, there's a lot of us who are survivors of of, um, of violent crimes, of, of, you know, gun violence, and and we're not for more gun control. We want the ability to be able to protect ourselves and our loved ones, and we haven't gotten any responses back. You know, there, and, and I, was, I'm, I'm, I was curious about that um, because it seems like what we are hearing is that if you're the victim of a violent crime um, and you support gun control, then you get to you, you your story gets to be told. Uh, right. you, may, you may get a, you, you know, you may get invited to the State of the Union address. You will have right. the opportunity to tell the world why you feel the way you feel. But if you're the right. victim of a violent crime and you don't support more gun control, you can shut up and have a seat in the back. Do you kind of feel like that, Amanda? A bit. I, I, I do. I, I got to tell you, I, I hate to tell you this, but I think you should. And I don't like that. Because when the president says that the victims of gun violence in uh, Newtown, Connecticut, that they deserve a vote, so do you, Amanda. So does every, uh, every college student out there right now who wants to, uh, and who is a concealed carry holder, who wants to be able to protect themselves on a college campus, they deserve that vote. And you deserve your voice, frankly. I think that's appalling that uh, Piers Morgan had the opportunity to have you on his program and apparently said no, perhaps because you would be too sympathetic uh, an individual and it would make it difficult for Piers Morgan to get his gun control agenda across. I got that f- would be my suspicion. That would be my suspicion too, Amanda. Well, listen, again, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you could come on the program today and talk about uh, everything that's going on in the news, your story, and, uh, again, the the fact that the media uh, is ignoring you out there. I hope maybe – I don't know if I want you to go on Piers Morgan, Amanda, but, I, you know, I would love to see your story uh, uh, told all over the place. So uh, please come back, uh, and, and really I hope that you and the family are doing very well. Oh, thank you. We're doing great. We're expecting our second little one in June. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. I'll have to come out and see you again soon. Yeah, that would be wonderful. All right. Thanks, Amanda. We'll talk again uh, before long. Okay. Thank you very much. Amanda Collins with us here on Cam and Company.